And again, it's time for gRPC. gRPC is the new cool kit in town. It's kind of a newer technology and it provides you a very fast and very uh, performant communication between C Sharp channels, between C Sharp servers. It uses HTTP2 behind the scenes, so it's not currently supported uh, from all the major browsers, but still between servers it's fine because the servers apparently support HTTP2 and that's not a problem. This time we don't have a common uh, library as you can see because all the contract and the common models are defined in a different way than the normal C Sharp syntax because these contracts can be used not only between C Sharp to C Sharp communication. You can use gRPC uh, with C Sharp and Java servers because uh, the contract has a different unified language which is not a C sharp language and is not the Java language so both of these servers need to understand the gRPC language uh, and if they do they can communicate easily over HTTP2. Let's see how to create a server with gRPC. To create a server with gRPC we mm, don't need a controller, we don't need uh, an MVC project at all. What you need to do, you need to create a gRPC gRPC service like this. So you will need to create your ASP.NET Core application with this project template. Of course you can do it with the normal template and install gRPC uh, on top of it. It's no problem but if you want to have a quick start do it from the project type I showed. Then, what you need to do, you need to install gRPC ASP.NET Core. That's, uh, that's the package you need for the server. Then, as you can see, we don't have controllers here. We have a Protoss, uh, like from the StarCraft race. <laughs> uh, a Protoss <laughs> folder with proto files. We will see them in a minute. And we have services, which is... Uh, essentially a normal C-sharp class. What we need to do before, t before we start using uh, gRPC, we need to add it on our service collection. So we need to go add gRPC and then in the endpoints we need to say map gRPC service and we need to map our service we are having here. So how this service works. As you can see there are no controllers here because you may not need controllers. We are not going to use REST here so essentially everything is fine. I just remembered in my previous video I forgot to start the refit example but it's fine. It behaves the same way as the REST client. If, if you want you can start it by yourself uh, I'm going to upload this. Uh, I'm going to upload this uh, this demo on GitHub, nevertheless. Good. Uh, how it works? How gRPC works? We need to define a contract first. The contract is essentially a proto file with a separate syntax. It's a different syntax from C Sharp and you need to learn it if you want to use gRPC. The bad news is that you need to learn a new language. It's very easy but still it's new language, it's new syntax. The good news is that every kind of server understands this language. So you can use gRPC as a multilingual microservice architecture which is very nice. So the syntax should define a service. First it says that we are using Proto3 version. We have a C-sharp namespace which is the namespace of this application. 
and we are defining the service contract. If you take a look at this, we are saying we want to have a service called weather, which needs to have two methods, save forecast and get forecast. Essentially the same as the controller here. We have two methods, we have get and post, but in this one we are saying we need to have two methods, get and save. Then we need to define messages. I'm defining an empty message, message when you don't need to send data. And I'm defining a message for this weather forecast. As you can see, it's no longer a C-sharp file. It's defined as a message. So I don't need to create a weather forecast class like this one. I'm defining it here. I'm saying my weather forecast message has a string summary. Uh, one means the order string uh, temperature. Uh, one and two are nothing else than an order of these properties. How to send them between the server and the client. So, in terms of uh, communication, the summary will be sent first and the temperature will be sent second. This is important because otherwise, because gRPC works on a very low level and when it reads the data, it needs to know which property is first. So this is why we are saying one here and one here. Another message I have is status response, which I'm using as a return type. Essentially, you need to say I want to have a service, it, its name is this one, it has arguments, for example here we need to, for the saving forecast we need to send a weather forecast and we return a status response. And the get forecast is uh, having an empty argument and returns a weather forecast. Good. What I also need to do is I need to add this line here, prot buff, specifying the proto, uh, the proto service, which is essentially this file here, because when I want to build my application, I need to generate the gRPC service. So if I don't add these lines here, my my uh, gRPC server will not generate the files need, needed for the client to work correctly. So for each gRPC service you add to your solution, for example this one, you need to define it here and you need to specify that this is the server. That's not the client, it's the server. Because essentially we you receive requests to here. Then you, what you need to do is you need to define the C# -sharp logic behind, behind that server. It's a normal class. Uh, your class needs to inherit the class, the service you are defining here. If you define a weather service, you need to inherit weather.weatherbase. If you are defining a greeter service, you need to inherit greeter.greeterbase. If you are defining a uh, cats service you need to inherit cats.weatherbase and so on. So again we have the same logic as with the C-sharp controllers but we're essentially using the service contract defined here. As you can see we have the same contract I'm overriding the task with status response which is the same which is the same type as it's defined here it has a success uh, property here it is uh, here here it is actually and we have the request which is weather forecast so we receive the same uh, contract as it's defined here in this service and we implement the logic as we see fit. We may call the database, we may do whatever we like. 
as you can see I'm doing the same logic I'm checking whether the weather forecast somewhere is empty and if it's empty I receive a success false response otherwise I add it to the fake database and with the get request I'm returning the first random data here from the client perspective it's uh, not very difficult to use this service it's strongly type which is very nice but what we need to do is you need to configure the project to use this proto file here how to do it first install google protobuf install grpc.net client and grpc tools these three are needed for the client to work correctly then add the same thing it's the same uh, line protobuf include and you need to specify where you need to include that uh, file essentially it's in the grpc server folder protos weather proto i'm giving the folder path to the same weather proto uh, file both the server needs to reference it here and the client needs to reference it too but the client specifies that it's a client and the server specifies that it's a server although it's the same file and if we have that covered if we specify everything correctly we install the projects and packages and if we reference the file then our grpc should start working correctly it's very easy you just create grpc channel for address you need to specify the address of the other server then you need to call give me a client for this channel and then the, the client is used as it's defined in the contract with say forecast get forecast you have this generated classes for you it's very convenient and very easy the pros of this uh, of this communication let me start it to see that everything is working correctly i'm starting the grpc server first then i'm going to start a client instance and if everything is printing and not throwing any exceptions we have a valid and working communication what are the pros and cons compared to rest compared to rest uh, the cons maybe it's the only uh, negative side of grpc that i'm seeing is that it's kind of new it's too new and not very developer not, not many developers are familiar with it that's a negative side because most people know how to use rest most developer at least uh, grpc is kind of new and it requires you to learn a different syntax it's not very difficult as we can see we define messages and we define a service it's not very difficult but still it's something new so that's uh, a more difficult learning curve in terms of communication it's super fast it's super performant so if you have a lot of microservices rest may not work but grpc will work correctly the downside of that is you need to define all the proto contracts that's the only downside and you need to keep them in sync between the microservices but that's normal when we have a server to server communication so this is grpc for you guys it's uh, a very nice technology it's new everybody loves it and it's super fast so make sure you try to create a contract once again you need to install on the server this this package you need to define your proto file and you need to specify it in the project so that it gets compiled otherwise you will not have if you remove that and save the project you start having exceptions
uh, compile time error sorry so uh, in order for compilation to work correctly you need to specify this uh, proto file here otherwise it's a pure C sharp language and the client needs to install three packages and needs to include the same proto file of course you you may copy the proto file but it's better to have uh, the same file referenced by both the server and the client this is why I'm referencing the file in the server folder because this way I'm sure that if this contract changes in the future my client will not compile otherwise it will compile if I have two versions of the files okay so thank you guys for watching this video I hope you like gRPC uh, it's nothing more essentially you can start writing gRPC uh, applications what you can do is you can abstract this uh, these calls here behind an interface so that it will be easier for you to, to use them behind the dependency injection container but still that's not something we need to cover in these videos so I'm going to see you in the next one about signal R